Good morning. Bright and early, or at least earlier than normal. It's good to see everybody today. I have a couple of announcements to get us started. Uh, young adults, we have brunch today, and Katie and Max are hosting. We're having homemade French toast and omelets. So seed me if you need some directions to get there. It's right after service. Men of Grace, from 5 to 7 tonight, we're having pretzels and dinner, homemade pretzels. You shape your own dough and you bake it. It'll be great. And then stick around. All are welcome, not just the men, at the Tizay service tonight, which starts in here at 7 o'clock. It's a great, great time. Uh, let's see. Uh, adult forums, we just had a great adult forum with Pamela Lanza. Her art is here in the chapel, all Lent. Next week, Stephen Georgiou from the Center for Arts and Religious Education in Berkeley is coming to talk a little bit about poetry. He's a poet and a poet scholar, and so we're going to learn a little bit about that. Uh, Wednesday evenings, dinner is at 545. If you would like to provide soup, please let us know. We would love to have you provide soup for us. Uh, evening prayer, that's in here at 6.30, so Brown Hall dinner in here at 6.30, and then that lasts a half an hour, and then in here at 7 is conversation. Come to one or all of those things on Wednesday nights. Uh, if you're visiting with us today, we have welcome cards in the backs of the pews in front of you. Feel free to fill those out and put them in the offering plate. Uh, one more thing. Uh, new in Lent. You will find one of these in your bulletin, or if not, there are extras in the narthex. Please fill in the blank. It could be one word. It could be however many words you can fit in that blank. Um, so please fill it out and put it in the basket underneath the TV in the narthex. They will be part of a mobile surprise on Holy Saturday. Please stand as you are able. <laughs> Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, 
who brings us safely through the sea, who gives us water from the rock, who leads us into the land of milk and honey. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Kyrie eleison. Kyrie eleison. For self-centered living and for failing to walk with humility and gentleness. Kyrie eleison. For longing to have what is not ours, and for hearts that are not at rest with ourselves. Kyrie eleison. Kyrie eleison. For misuse of human relationships, and for unwillingness to see the image of God in others. Kyrie eleison. For jealousies that divide families and nations, and for rivalries that create strife and warfare, Kyrie eleison. Kyrie eleison. For reluctance in sharing the gifts of God, and for carelessness with the fruits of creation, Kyrie eleison. For hurtful words that condemn and for angry deeds that harm. Kyrie eleison. Kyrie eleison. For idleness in witnessing to Jesus Christ and for squandering the gifts of love and grace. Kyrie eleison. We are reconciled to God through Christ. For his sake, God does not count our trespasses against us. Once dead in sin, we are now alive to God. Once lost, we now are found. God clothes you in the finest robe of all, the righteousness of Jesus Christ, forgiving you all your sins and making of you a new creation. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Lord God, our strength, the struggle between good and evil rages within and around us, and the devil and all the forces that defy you tempt us with empty promises. Keep us steadfast in your word, and when we fall, raise us again and restore us through your Son. Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. A reading from Genesis. The Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to till it and keep it. And the Lord God commanded the man, you may freely eat of every tree of the garden, but of the tree of knowledge and good and evil you shall not eat, for in the day that you eat it, you shall die. Now the serpent was more crafty than any other wild animal that the Lord God had made. He said to the woman, Did God say, you shall not eat from any tree in the garden? The woman said to the serpent, we may eat of the fruit of the trees in the garden. But God said, you shall not eat of the fruit of the tree that is in the middle of the garden, nor shall you touch it or you shall die. But the serpent said to the woman, you will not die. For God knows that when you eat of it, your eyes will be opened and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was a delight to the eyes and that the tree was to be sired uh, to make one wise, 
she took of its fruit and ate. And she also gave some to her husband who was with her, and he ate. Then the eyes of both were opened, and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together and made loin cloth for themselves. The word of God. is forgiven, whose sin is remitted. Oh, happy those to whom the Lord imputes no guilt, in whose spirit is no guile. Lord, forgive But now I have acknowledged my sins. My guilt I did not hide. I said, I will confess my offense to the Lord. And you, Lord, have forgiven the guilt of my sin. Lord, forgive me. are my hiding place, O Lord. You save me from distress. You surround me with cries of deliverance. Lord, forgive me. Rejoice, rejoice in the Lord. Exalt you just. Oh, come, bring out your joy, all you upright of heart. Lord, forgive us, Lord, A reading from Romans. Just as sin came into the world through one man, and death came through sin, and so death spread to all because all have sinned, sin was indeed in the world before the law, but sin is not reckoned when there is no law. Yet death exercised dominion from Adam to Moses, even over those whose sins were not like the transgression of, Ad of Adam, who is a type of the one who was to come. But the free gift is not like the trespass. For if the many died through the one man's trespass, much more surely have the grace of God and the free gift in the grace of the one man, Jesus Christ, abundant for the many, abounded for the many. And the free gift is not like the effect of one man's sin. For the judgment following one trespass brought condemnation, but the free gift following many trespasses brings justification. If, because of the one man's trespass, death exercised dominion through that one, much more surely will those who receive the abundance of grace and the free gift of righteousness exercise dominion in life through the one man, Jesus Christ. Therefore, just as one man's trespass led to condemnation for all, so one man's act of righteousness leads to justification and life for all. For just as by the one man's disobedience the many were made sinners, so by the one man's obedience the many will be made righteous. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Please stand as you are able for the reading of the gospel.
The Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. He fasted 40 days and 40 nights, and afterwards he was famished. The tempter came and said to him, If you are the Son of God, command these stones to become loaves of bread. But Jesus answered, It is written, One does not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him to the holy city and placed him on the pinnacle of the temple, saying to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down, for it is written, He will command his angels concerning you, and on their hands they will bear you up, so that you will not dash your foot against a stone. Jesus said to the devil, Again, it is written, Do not put the Lord your God to the test. Again, the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their splendor. And he said to him, All these I will give you if you will fall down and worship me. Jesus said to him, Away with you, Satan, for it is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve only him. Then the devil left him, and suddenly angels came and waited on him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Christ. You may be seated, and I'll invite the kids forward. I have a magic trick that I need your help with. And bring your fingers. We're going to need your fingers. Magic fingers. Welcome. Thanks for coming up, everybody. What is this? A rock. a rock. Have you ever eaten a rock before? Yes, you've eaten a rock? How'd that taste? <laughs> Not so good, huh? Rocks are really hard. It's really hard to chew a rock. And so when Jesus was in the wilderness for 40 days and 40 nights, guess what? He didn't eat anything. And he didn't have anything to drink. If you didn't have anything to eat or drink for 40 days, would you be pretty hungry? You wouldn't? Probably eating rocks. <laughs> well, Jesus was super hungry after not eating for 40 days. And then the devil showed up. And he said, you know what, Jesus? I know that you're kind of a magician and you can do miracles and all those kinds of things. So here's a rock. And I want you to turn that rock into a loaf of bread so that you're not hungry anymore. The devil didn't want Jesus to be hungry. So, I need your help today. Does everybody know how to snap their fingers? No. If you don't know how to snap your fingers, when I say snap, go ahead and just say snap. It works, I promise. But if you do know how to snap your fingers, I want you to snap them. So, I have my rock, and I have this towel that my wife's grandma gave us. <laughs> So when I say snap, I want you to either snap your fingers or say the word snap. And this stone is going to turn into a loaf of bread. I hope so. <laughs> Ready? I'll say three, two, one, snap. And then you all go, snap. Sound good? Three, two, one, snap. Is it bread? Okay, so what I think happened was we all need to say the word snap and we need to snap at the same time. And I want you to say it really loud, okay? Okay, get going. Okay, three, two, one, snap! That didn't work either. So when Jesus was in the wilderness and he was super hungry and the devil said, turn this stone into a loaf of bread because then you won't be hungry anymore, you know what Jesus said? He said, no. No. That's weird. If I had the power to turn this stone into a loaf of bread, I would have done it. Not because I'm hungry, but because I want to show you I'm good at magic. But I can't do that. And all of us together, we tried snapping our fingers, and we couldn't turn this stone. Snap, snap, snap. snap. It's still stone. Snap, snap. 
Jesus said no to the devil. Now, why is that? When Jesus became human, when Jesus became one of us, he had to go through all the things that we go through. Jesus didn't snap his fingers because he wanted to know what it's like to be hungry. Why would you want to know what it's like to be hungry? Because sometimes we're hungry, and God wants to know what it's like to be you. And so instead of saying snap and turning that stone into a loaf of bread, Jesus said, I want to know what it's like to be hungry. So let's fold our hands and bow our heads and say a prayer. God, we thank you so much for becoming human, to wanting to get to know us. We know it wasn't easy being hungry. We know it wasn't easy feeling pain or not having anything to drink for 40 days. But we know you did it because you want to know who we are. You want to become who we are and invite us to be with you. Amen. You can go back to your seat. Thanks for helping. I'm sorry this didn't actually work. Okay, if it works next time, I'll give the bread to you. And you can bring me more rocks, and then we'll make more bread. Okay. Yeah, there's got to be some good rocks out there. I think so. So when I was growing up, when I was like middle school, like early middle school, which was like fifth or sixth grade for my hometown, I read this book, and I can't remember what it's called. I can't even remember the plot, but I remember this one character. He was my age at the time, so whatever fifth or sixth grade is, that's the age of this character. And uh, I remember this character because he had a special ability. His favorite thing to do was to go into dark alleys where people were mixing up cards and saying, if you give me $5 and can pick for me where the Queen of Hearts is, I'll give you $20. So you know how this works. They try and hide the, the Queen of Hearts. They maybe even take it off the table and put it in a sleeve. It's impossible to find that Queen of Hearts. But this kid found it every time and would often become, uh, well, running away from the guy that was a little upset. But how did this happen? Well, he found out that he has an ability to change anything he touches into something else. Pretty soon his dad learned about it, and pretty soon he was changing $1 bills into $100 bills. And that's why I remember this character, because <laughs> I kept thinking, what are all the things that I could fix if I could turn a $1 bill into a $100 bill? <laughs> what if I could turn something into something? It doesn't really matter. There were so many things that I could do with a $100 bill. I could get 100 $1 bills and get even more $100 bills. Or I could buy something desperately needed. Maybe we wanted to have a fancy dinner that night. I could take my family or something. There was always something that I could use that $100 for. Another favorite story of mine growing up was Aladdin. You know, he had Robin Williams as a genie. And I thought, how cool is that? <laughs> what if I could wish for me to be perfectly healthy no matter what kind of food I ate or how many times I went out to exercise? Being my middle school self, could I wish that my teeth were perfect without having to brush them? <laughs> Wouldn't it be cool to have a genie to snap his fingers and make it all better? Or say the word snap if we can't snap. Jesus had that opportunity. Jesus saw where the brokenness was and Jesus knew where to snap his fingers to fix it. Or let me rephrase. The devil knew where Jesus could snap his fingers and fix it. Hunger. Jesus was hungry. More than that, one child dies from hunger every five seconds. Jesus had a chance to prove himself. There were a lot of doubters. Jesus could say all he want, that he wanted to spread love, and that he did it in the name of God. But who would believe him? 
Maybe if he jumped off a cliff and some angels saved him, maybe people would believe that this man's message comes from God. Power. Earthly power. What if we see a system in which not everyone is served to their own interests, but which only a few are served? Jesus saw the corruption in the temple, the corruption in the Roman government. And who could do anything about it? What could this peasant, this carpenter, artisan class person do about it? Well, says the devil, I will make you king, ruler over the whole world, and you can end and change all the oppressive systems that be. These do not sound like bad things to me. If I was Jesus, I would snap my fingers three times. But you see, what Jesus realized is that while the intention may be good, the result is personal. Turn that stone into a loaf of bread, and it will fill your stomach. And Jesus says, what about those children that die every five seconds from hunger? Jesus says, what good does it do if I prove that I am from God And people are too distracted to hear the message, love your neighbor. What if people are looking at me when they should be looking at their neighbor? Jesus can become ruler of the world and change the systems. And yet Jesus foresees a scenario in which our systems, plural, become system, singular, in which the diversity that God has created becomes monotonous. Our 64-pack of crayons, as my professor puts it, becomes an eight-pack of crayons. Jesus does not snap his fingers because Jesus is speaking truth to the reality in which we all live. We have all experienced hunger. Whether that is in your stomach, in a physical need for food that you cannot fill because you don't have the money or the way of getting food that's necessary in our world. Or whether that's a hunger for relationship. Whether that's a hunger to express yourself artistically. Who knows what that hunger is? But we have felt it. And Jesus needed to feel it too. In order to become truly human, in order to remain truly divine, in order to be both and, Jesus refused to snap his fingers. When Jesus went up on that cross to die for us, the pinnacle, the end of Lent, Jesus did so having known hunger. Jesus knew what it was like to feel hunger. Jesus knew what it was like for people to doubt him. Jesus knew what it was like to be frustrated with a system that did not care about him. Jesus did so as a human being. And in that, we have hope. Because while Jesus was human, Jesus was divine. While Jesus was human and experienced brokenness, he retained the love of God. The love of the world. The love of those broken people that crucified him. Love remained where brokenness also remained. You see, the world outside, the devils, the Satans outside, will tell you that, yeah, our system's not perfect, but it is what it is. There's nothing you can do about it to change it. 
if you are experiencing brokenness in this life, you are an anomaly. And you have done something to deserve your brokenness. Here in this place, we gather to hear Christ and we do so because we know better. We know that you do not experience brokenness because you did something wrong. You experience brokenness because that is the reality of our world. Jesus experienced brokenness because that is the reality of our world. The devils and the Satans outside are trying to lie to us. They are saying, if you want to, you can turn that stone into a loaf of bread. Here, we gather and we hear Christ say that God's love is enough, that there is enough bread. Did you know that this this is an actual statistic? from the uh, worldhunger.org that there is enough agricultural calories to feed each person in the world 2,700 calories a day. And yet one child dies from hunger every five seconds. The world tells us that there is not enough and it's each person for themselves. But we gather here because we know better. We gather here because we have experienced and still hold on to the love of Christ that we know is for more than just ourselves. The love of Christ does not say each person for themselves. The love of Christ says one God's love for everybody. And so when we come here and we gather and we hear these words about Jesus refusing to snap his fingers, we hear these words about Jesus experiencing hunger and thirst, Jesus is equipping us to go out from this place to show that the love and the truth don't stop here. That the love and the truth is carried by us, by Christ, and the Holy Spirit in us to the world that we know is broken whether it can admit it or not. And so uh, as we go forth in this Lenten period, these 40 days and 40 nights in which we are honest with ourselves about our brokenness, let us too be honest with the world about our brokenness. Let us become equipped through Christ's words to change the world. No, we can't snap our fingers and turn a stone into a loaf of bread. But there are things we can do to heal the brokenness of this world. There are loaves of bread abounding for the hungry. There are shelters abounding for the vulnerable and the people who experience violence every day. We need to remember Christ's love and Christ's truth when we go out of this place. We need to remember that Christ wanted to experience the same pain that you experience so that we might not be blind to the Christ in our neighbor. That we might not be blind to the Christ in ourselves. Amen. Please stand as you are able.
Let us confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Returning to the Lord, our God, let us pray for the church, the world, and all of God's creation. Let us pray for the whole Christian church. Instruct and teach your church in the way that it should go so that it worships and serves only you. Hear us, O God. Let us pray for the well-being of creation. Renew all waters, lands, and skies to reflect your glory and guide us to be respectful in how we use all earthly resources. Hear us, O God. Let us pray for all nations and peoples. Grant justice where there is inequity, peace where there is conflict, and wisdom for all who lead. Hear us, O God. Let us pray for all in need. Provide caring communities for all who are burdened by guilt, shame, addiction, and illness, especially Frank and those we name aloud now. Preserve them from all trouble. Hear us, O God. Let us pray for this assembly. Keep all who worship in this place steadfast in your word. Fill with your Holy Spirit all who are preparing for baptism. Hear us, O God. Let us give thanks for the faithful departed whose transgressions are forgiven and who now rejoice in heaven. Lead us in their path. Hear us, O God. Into your hands, O God, we commend ourselves and all for whom we pray, trusting in your abundant mercy through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Take a moment and share the peace with one another. So many things going on here at Grace Lutheran Church that this is your second installment of announcements for the morning. I did want to mention a couple of pieces as art has been a theme uh, or and an ongoing theme in the season of Lent to point out a couple of pieces and I can never the artist's name. Dwight Mickelson. Dwight Mickelson, who did these mobile pieces here through uh, Vicar Nikolai's connections through Concordia College in Moorhead. 
So that's uh, where these pieces came from, and you'll see these also transition as we move into the Easter season, which we're excited about. Also wanted to mention our cross here up in the front of the space. Um, it's a little hard to recognize from the last time it was here in the worship space. That is our Christmas tree. And it is a reminder to us of the, the baby that we celebrated his birth so recently is the man that we observe in these stories of Lent and Holy Week and Easter. A couple of other things in different parts of the Christian tradition, there's a lot of conversation about what might be given up during Lent. But this seems like a good time to talk about the disciplines we might add as well. And in social ministry, we have a lot going on this season. You'll be getting an email with a lot of details on things like Tuesday dinners, both helping provide the dinner, not as in getting the food, but helping with the labor of it, cleaning up after the Tuesday meals, ecumenical hunger program. Next weekend, we have a big work day over in East Palo Alto, if you are interested. Wednesday evenings during Lent, we need soup, so maybe that's something you can offer. Food drive all this season. In fact, you can see a flyer in the narthex near the collection box with details on what's needed in particular. Sunday School is doing a drive for the Global Barnyard, which is kind of like the Heifer Project, if you're familiar with that. And Bread for the World letter writing is something that we are doing on an ongoing basis. You'll see a display in the narthex, ways in which we can seek to influence our elected officials in regards to issues related to hunger. And that's all of it. At this point, we will receive the offering. If you are visiting with us, we'd love to have you throw in a welcome card as well, or you're certainly welcome to hand it to us at the end of the service.
stand as you are able. Let us pray. God, our provider, you have not fed us with bread alone, but with words of grace and life. Bless us and these your gifts, which we receive from your bounty, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Merciful Lord, heaven and earth are full of your glory. In great love, you sent to us Jesus, your Son, who reached out to heal the sick and suffering, who preached good news to the poor, and who on the cross opened his arms to all. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his death, resurrection, and ascension, we await his coming in glory. Pour out upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord, and unite the wills of all who share this heavenly food, the body and blood of Jesus Christ our Lord, 
to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Our Father in heaven, seated as we sing, as the communion assistants come forward. As you come forward to receive the sacrament, you'll first take a glass, then you'll receive the bread. The first assistant has wine, the second grape juice. And you'll place your glasses then in the baskets in the corners as you return to your seats. If you need a gluten-free option, just ask us as you come through. All is ready, all are welcome.
stand as you are able. Let us pray. God of mercy, we give you thanks for receiving us at your table and serving us with the food of eternal life. We who once were dead are now living members of your Son, awakened by the breathing of your Spirit. Send us out to awaken others to the mystery of your love, which is revealed to all the world in the one who came to give himself away, Jesus Christ our Lord. May the Lord support you all the day long of this troubled life until the shadows lengthen and the evening comes and the busy world is hushed. The fever of life is over and your work is done. That in God's mercy may you be granted a safe lodging and a holy rest and peace at the last. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Remember the poor. Thanks be to God. <laughs> <laughs>